Hi students, in the first video of Silaginella, we have learned about general characters and outline classification of pteridophytes according to Sporn 1976. In second video, we will be discussing about life cycle of Silaginella, but in this video, we will be restricted to habit, habitat, distribution, morphology, anatomy of stem, rhizophore, root and leaf. So, we can start this presentation. To the beginning, we will learn about morphology of Silaginella. As you can see here, the plant body is sporophytic and it is herbaceous in nature and the shoots are dorsiventral and radial and the nature is creeping or sometimes it is erect. So, this creeping and erect nature varies from species to species. The leaves are small so that it is mentioned here like microphyllus and there is a presence of ligule. So, ligule in the very first presentation you might have seen this is a leaf you can see and small tongue like structure which is present at the base of leaf and that is called as ligule that already we have learned in the first presentation. So, such type of a ligule is present there at the base of each leaf and each sporophyll. A rhizophore is a leafless structure from where actually the roots are arising. So, such type of a rhizophore you can see is there which is leafless structure and at its tip there are present roots. Sporophylls are generally aggregated into strobilus. This strobilus synonymously also called as cone. At the apices of the branch these strobilus are present. So, if this is the branch and at the tip such type of strobilus kind of a structure can be seen. So, it is present at the apices of each individual branch and this is a heterosporous pteridophyte. Heterosporous means what? It produces two different kind of spores. Small spores are there. These are male or you can call microspores and large spores are also there. These are female spores and these spores are called as megaspores. Then this is heterothallic that means dioecious. So, dioecious gametophytic prothalli will be developed. So, this microspores will form one kind of prothallus and megaspores will form another kind of prothallus. So, prothalli in this case are of two types. Hence, it is considered or hence it is named as dioecious or heterothallic prothalloid. Anthrozoites are biflagellate. So, male reproductive structure anthrozoid which is like this and it has two flagella. Hence, this is biflagellate structure. Now, we will discuss about anatomy. So, here you will see the anatomy of stem. So, the anatomy of the mature stem is very distinct and it is differentiated into outer epidermis, middle cortex and centrally located still. The outer walls of the epidermis are cutinized. Here you can see outer wall of epidermis, these are cutinized. It is devoid of stomata. So, stomata are not present at all. This is continuous. There is no any interruption between due to absence of stomata. In many species, there are several layers 
thick walled cells and several several layered structure is there that is called as a hypodermis so this entire zone you can see right from the epidermis till here this zone is called as cortex here you can see this zone from this epidermis till this it is cortex beneath the epidermis and uh, uh, endodermis there is present cortex which merge gradually with thin walled chlorophyllous uh, cells of the cortex so, so within cortex zone you can see some of the chlorophyllous cells apart from that many other characteristic features you can see the cortex is usually made up of completely arranged angular parenchymatous cells without intercellular spaces young plants invariably show monostelic configuration each steel is surrounded by single layered pericycle the steel is set off from the cortex by few radially elongated endodermal cells and that is called as a trabeculae they have the characteristic casparian bands on their radial walls thus the central steel is separated from the cortex by large air space regardless of the stellar organization in the primary xylem is uh, actually the primary xylem is exarch in development and metaxylem consists primarily of trachids and scalary form pits the phloem of selaginella consists of sieve cells and parenchyma actually in this the specific structure that can be uh, seen that is trabeculae so if you look in the section this is epidermis here somewhere endodermis and the cortical cells are actually separated by uh, specialized kind of cells and these cells which separate cortex and steel this cell is called as trabeculae now let us discuss about uh, structure of a rhizophore a transverse section of a rhizophore shows features very much similar to that of a root however with some mild variations the epidermis is single layered that can be seen this epidermis this part which is single layered and highly cutinized the cortex is extensive and may be differentiated into inner thin walled parenchymatous and outer thick walled sclerenchymatous zone so outer thick walled sclerenchymatous zone can be seen and inner thin walled parenchymatous zone can be seen so from this till this there is presence of cortex then the steel is protostelic and surrounded by layer of endodermis so here you can see the stellar zone and that is surrounded by single layered endodermal cells that endodermis can be seen here it shows variations in its form and arrangement of protoxylem in different species of selaginella so arrangement of protoxylem in this case is differing from species to species now we will discuss about the structure of root so anatomically the root consists of centrally located steel surrounded by cortex and epiblema outermost layer is epiblema so in stem and leaf it is epidermis but in case of root it is called as epiblema which is made up of large cells from some epiblemal cells arise root hair so there is presence of root hairs to the epiblemal cells 
Below the epidermis are few layers of parenchymatous chymatous cortex. But in old roots, cortex is the region of thick walled sclerenchymatous cells. Usually the endodermis is not well developed. Pericycle is 1 to 3 layered. Steel is monarch. One patch of xylem alternates with one patch of phloem and hence that is called as a monarch. One patch of xylem alters with one patch of phloem. Such condition is called as a monarch. And exarch condition means protoxylem at center and metaxylem at periphery. And when endarch condition is there, where protoxylem at periphery and metaxylem at center. This is the difference in exarch and endarch condition. In Selaginella, it is exarch condition. And this is about the leaf. A vertical section of the leaf shows epidermal layer, mesophyll tissue, steel and stoma. Here you can see epidermal layer. This is mesophyll tissue. This is lower epidermis. This is vascular bundle consists of xylem as well as phloem and somewhere here actually not shown in this diagram but there is presence of stomatal opening. The cells of upper and lower epidermal layers are similar in most of the species. Some species develop bristles or short hair like structures extending out from the epidermis. The mesophyll consists of a loosely arranged spongy parenchyma. Here you can see that cells are loosely arranged with intercellular spaces. Stomata are present generally on the abaxial lower. Actually it is not represented here but it is there. A single vascular bundle composed of central xylem surrounded by phloem is present at the center. So that you can see here. The bundle is surrounded by distinct bundle sheath cell. So this vascular bundle is surrounded by a specialized sheath and that is called as a bundle sheath cell. So this is what about anatomy. In the next and the third presentation, we will be discussing about reproductive characteristics and life cycle pattern of Silaginella. Thank you.